get started with um, some quick introductions and information uh, before our keynote speech. Uh, good morning, my name is Lisa Koch. I'm the Associate Director of the University of Kansas Transportation Center. I will be your MC for the uh, Transportation Innovation Summit, uh, both today and on Thursday. Thank you for joining us. The purpose of the summit is to showcase innovative projects in Kansas and generate ideas for how to use innovation to move Kansas forward. The projects that will be showcased this week have identified new methods through technology, partnerships, or ingenuity to solve transportation challenges in Kansas. We hope that you will come away from the summit with new ideas and motivation to try the untried at work. The summit was funded by the Federal Highway Administration through the State Transportation Innovation Council. The University of Kansas Transportation Center is working in partnership with KDOT on this project, and we are thankful for the support of the FHWA Kansas Division, KDOT, and other partners for making this happen. Special thanks to Mike Floberg, Director of Innovation Technologies at KDOT and Javier Amata, Environmental Freight Innovation Coordinator for the FHWA Kansas Division for their work in making this summit happen as well. Before we talk about what to expect today, Peyton Smith with the University of Kansas Transportation Center will provide an introduction to the summit website. Peyton. Thank you, Lisa. Let me go ahead and share my screen really quick. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Peyton, and I will be briefly reviewing the contents of the website and going over how to navigate our virtual event. So when accessing the event after registration, it should open up to a page like this. Um, it'll look like this on the internet browser, but mobile app may be a little different. It should have the same capabilities, though. So now let us look at the schedule. Under the schedule, you will find access to all the sessions being held during the two-day event. And if we select an event here, you can see the abstract, the date and time it's being held, and a button which will allow you to join the online session. All sessions will have their own Zoom link, and we encourage participants to utilize the Zoom features such as chat if you have any questions or comments during the session. And each event takes place in Zoom. And once you enter the, enter the event, you will be muted, and we will ask that you stay muted. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the chat and we will address them at the end. Please keep in mind we will only be re we will be recording all the sessions and the recordings will be posted on their YouTube channel in a couple of weeks. In the event, you will also find a few other features, including the speaker. And if you click on the speaker, you'll find more information about them. A messaging channel specific to the event and a questions channel specific to that event you can access anytime during the event. Other features of the virtual event include our people and companies tabs. And here you'll be able to view other attendees profiles and connect with them via chat. And under companies section, you will be able to view featured companies profiles, learn more about them and connect via our appointments or chat buttons if they have so enabled. And finally, if we look over on the right hand side, we see a collapsible menu here that houses all your chat channels throughout the event. Um, you can revisit chats or start new conversations here. And you can even chat with me here. If you look on the side, here's my profile. And if you have any questions or comments during the event, you can access me via email or through the chat feature of the event. And I also wanted to point out our live feed section here. Um, we can see Lisa already made a, a post and you can have conversations in this general category or through any of those um, different topics you picked at the beginning when you register. So thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoy the Kansas Transportation Innovation Summit. Thank you, Peyton. After the keynote, there will be five 30-minute sessions on different examples of innovation in Kansas. As Peyton mentioned, to attend the session, you go to your schedule tab and click on the session to get access to the Zoom link. While you're listening, we encourage you to be active on our live feed. We have numerous categories for you, so meet and mingle with others interested in innovation and in the specific subject areas. And now let's get the show started. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce Kansas Secretary of Transportation, Julia Lorenz, who will be energizing us with a keynote speech. And I'll give a little bit of information about Julie, although most of you already know her. Secretary Lorenz was appointed by Governor Laura Kelly in January 2019 to lead the Kansas Department of Transportation. 
With more than 25 years of experience with national engineering firms and with KDOT, she is recognized as a national leader in the areas of policy development, collaboration, and scenario planning. She was recently elected president of the Mid-American Association of State Transportation Officials called MASTO, a collaboration of transportation leaders representing 10 Midwest states to advance highway transit and, and related issues important to the region. Lorenz also serves as the executive committee of, on the executive committee of the Transportation Research Board and is chairing the Council on Aviation for the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. So thank you, Secretary Lorenz, for giving us a little bit of your time today. I know you are preparing for a conference in New Orleans. I will bring up your session and welcome. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Thank right. you. Well, good morning, everyone. And it is really uh, an honor and a pleasure to welcome you all to this Kansas Transportation Innovation Summit. I want to especially thank FHWA for coming up with the idea, uh, to the University of Kansas Transportation Center for serving as our host. And Lisa, thank you for your leadership in pulling all of this together into KDOT's own Mike Floberg. And thanks to each of you for joining us virtually. It is really when we all come together that, uh, that we're able to innovate and not, not just come up with ideas, because ideas are great, but it's in the implementation that things really start to change. So Lisa, with that, if you don't mind uh, moving through our slides, if we can go on to the next slide, please. So Malcolm Gladwell is one of my favorite authors. And I, um, whether he's talking about the tipping point or innovation or whatever, he's um, He's very helpful in sort of reframing big picture ideas. And he says innovation, it is the heart of the knowledge economy and it's fundamentally social. And I think um, oftentimes we think about the technology of our work and technology is often the fuel. It's the thing that makes, makes propels us forward. But all the technology in the world doesn't help us if people don't adopt that technology, if they don't use it, if they're afraid of it, we have to help move people along because we are all in the people business. Ultimately, our purpose, our mission is to help people move or uh, be safer or move commerce, but those are all really very people focused things. And there's a social aspect to keep in mind and bring, bring to our work. So next slide, please. So I am coming to you from New Orleans, as, uh, as Lisa said, we're getting ready to have our spring meeting for AASHTO. And if you just pause for a minute, think like to even 10 years ago, we wouldn't have had a conference virtually. We would have thought that had to be in person. And, uh, and think of the amount of interaction that is now possible and not only possible, but like routine now to uh, it, our world has gotten much smaller through technology and uh, and because of co I think COVID simply exacerbated or accelerated some of the trends that we were already seeing. So uh, it's just a recognition, a pause of how quickly things change and how adaptable people can be when they need to be. Okay, next slide. So let's get in our time machine and go back about 80 years or so to take a look at what this trajectory or trend line looks like in terms of not just the technology, but the adaption or adoption of technology. So next slide. So Tom Thomas Watson in 1943 said, yeah, you know, I think there's, there's a market for maybe five computers in the world. Well, that guy was wildly wrong, wildly wrong. So you're right, you get to Steve Jobs and he's like, hey, and I've got one here. I want to take a picture pretty soon for Twitter, right? But um, he said, no, I can make a little bitty machine that everyone, that will be accessible to everyone. And the brilliance of Steve Jobs is not in the size of this phone, while helpful. It's that it pops out of a box and nobody's afraid of it. You just plug it in and it works. So again, it's that intersection of innovation and usability that I think is so important for us to think about. Next slide. So now I can uh, FaceTime with my daughter in Pittsburgh. I can bank, I can order lunch, I can get a ride to the airport, all from something that's about the, you know, some, something that fits in my pocket, wildly helpful. Okay, next slide. And so 
in our public sphere, so whether you work in the public sector or you provide support to the private sector, I think it's important to understand that the public's expectations of our delivery is increasing. And I welcome that. We ought to be held to very high standards. And in order to meet those expectations, we certainly need to have an innovative street. We need to be thinking about how to improve not just our products, but our delivery, our service. Next slide. And the challenge really is to deliver that at pace, at speed. And so whether you are in the planning realm and you are putting plans together, or you are in the design world, and we talk about whether it's design build or can you use a CAD in a 3D modeling sort of way, or we think about a, an app to help folks uh, more easily chain their rides. Whatever it is, people want to move at pace and we all need to pick up the pace of our work. Next slide. And this slide speaks to, uh, this is one of my favorite slides actually in the entire deck. It speaks to the adoption curve, how quickly it was taking 40, 50 years for electricity and telephone to be adopted. Now, that's two, there are two reasons for that. One is sort of culturally, but also those are physical systems that literally had to be built out. As you move into more of those virtual experiences like a mobile phone or the web, those are connected you know, electronically with fewer cables, fewer wires. And that allows the speed of deployment and adoption to increase. Next slide. So Moore's Law, which was broken, I think, uh, just a couple years ago, maybe, maybe two years ago, is this idea that transistors could double at low cost. And there's, that's another piece of this innovation uh, discussion that I hope you all have today and, and on Thursday, which is not only the technology piece and the speed piece, but driving down the cost of deployment. Those are all things that come together along with working with folks around adoption. So next slide. So to project, so the iPhone that was just released, it has 15 billion transistors in its little bitty, in its little bitty self. So off the charts, when you think about the power that's in this more than some of those first Apollo missions in the entire room, at uh, the Space Center. Next slide. And the prediction is there's an aspiration that by 2030, a trillion transistors. So um, I can't even imagine with the computing power, not just how quickly computations can be accomplished, but when you think about AI, artificial intelligence and machine learning that can move us from a calculation to a projection to analyzing in ways that humans, it would take us a long time also, the role that humans play in managing that whole ecosystem is important to consider. Next slide. So we talk about sometimes the role of government and that big institutions are hard to move. You know, they're like big battleships. And that's true, right? Like it, and with good reason, our institutions need to be protected. But I look at the people that are here today. My hope is that you're like the, the nimble speed boats in front. You know, go try things. It's okay to not have resounding success. We need you to chart the path forward for the big ships that turn a little more slowly. That's what I hope for you all today. You be the speedboats. You go try. You be nimble. You be adaptable. You look for cost-effective deployments. Go try for the rest of the big steamships. Next slide. So from Harvard, Harvard Business School has identified two primary successful uh, success factors in terms of innovation, ability and motivation. And I have every confidence that whether we're talking about KDOT or other state agencies or agencies in general, we are motivated. We're here because we want to serve the greater good. That I have no doubt. On the ability side though, there are some there are, whether they're real or, cons or, or perceived barriers, we have, um, we have many jobs that we need to perform. We are stewards of taxpayer dollars. So writ large, we have to be careful uh, and that we innovate in a, um, in a safer way, but we need pilot projects, right? You're, you're not gonna build a whole program around a new idea, but pilot projects can be so helpful. And we need folks like you today with great abilities to innovate, to think ahead, to bring ideas forward, 
and in pilot project sorts of ways. Let us test your good ideas. Next slide. And we're doing some really great work at KDOT in partnership with the private sector. So we're doing a road usage charge study to look at how might we fund transportation in the long run and technology will be key to that. Charge up Kansas. It's our, it's our initiative to get charging stations across the state. You all are familiar with Ike, our, our Eisenhower Legacy Transportation Program. Many more um, programs that are available to local units of government to tap into a two year rolling list of projects. Certainly on the drone side of things, we're, we're one of five uh, DOTs in the nation. We're national leaders in doing experimentation and pilot projects as it relates to drones. 69 Express, first managed lane in the Midwest. Again, we'll rely on technology and home, which is our pilot project in cooperation with the Department of Agriculture to look at getting um, more broadband out so that farmers can take a look at opening up some carbon markets. What I would say, across all of, these, um, all of these innovative approaches, one of the key pieces to each of these is a significant and important engagement with people. So in some other states, um, some of these efforts have been, have been controversial because people didn't understand the thinking underneath the work. We work really hard to connect with people, with communities, to understand that we're piloting these ideas. We're, we're seeking input so that we can shape policies and programs that really fit within the Kansas context. So it's that beautiful marriage of innovative thinking with the people part so that we can move forward and have a very successful and sustainable state. Okay, next slide. And that's exactly what I've been talking about here. See, I, I beat myself to the punchline. It's about working with our partners to innovate at speed. We really need to work with our partners and what you all are doing today. I look forward, Lisa. I want to hear what the ideas are generated out of this conference because um, intentionally, intentionally working to identify ideas and translate ideas into pilot pro projects is, is essential to us innovating in the long term. And so... Um, this is one of our favorite electricians, if you will. Um, you know, you have an opportunity. Opportunity is not the same thing as guaranteed success. Opportunity isn't, isn't formula funds. Opportunity is coming together, coming up with ideas, and then doing the hard work of implementation. Next slide. So with that, I want to say thank you everyone for your for your participation today. I look forward to hearing your ideas. There is a very, um, let me say, KDOT is very interested in your ideas. We have some additional funds now through the IIJA, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. There is a world of opportunity. 40% of those funds um, are coming through grants. So dream big, think big, we can figure out the implementation piece and how to get those ideas moving forward. And don't forget, we have an innovation fund um, through KDOT now, and we are seeking applications for those for some advanced projects. Uh, I, would, I, I would suggest coordination with a local unit of government will be more successful or through an academic organization. So with that, Lisa, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. I don't know if you wanna do Q&A or if we're gonna call it good. We do have some time for Q&A. If anyone has any questions they'd like to put in the chat. Uh, Julie or Mike Floberg, and I know Mike's gonna talk about this a little bit at the end of Thursday, but can you talk a little bit more about that innovation funding? Sure, so this is a new program uh, established under Ike, under the Eisenhower Legacy Transportation Program. It's a recognition by the legislature that and, and Governor Kelly, that in order for us to be successful in the long term, we need to be investing in new ideas. So uh, and and piloting those. So an example would be uh, the city of Lenexa came forward with a grant application and we are putting and Mike can give you the better technical details, but essentially some sensors in the pavement near intersections um, to improve safety and traffic flow. Another example would be uh, for KCATA, so transit in Johnson County came forward with a grant application to essentially build an app that can that connects existing apps so that it's easier to schedule transit rides. Um, 
I don't know. I think I saw a question in the chat feature. Are they open to nonprofits? Yes, they are open to nonprofits. So I would say it's um, making sure that the application serves a public purpose is really what we is one of the defining criteria. And um, I think the fund has it had one to two million and the legislature this year may have directed five million into that fund. I can't remember if that stayed in the budget or not. But we're certainly interested with applications from across the state and it is absolutely open to all modes. It doesn't need to be highway or transit. Um, we're open to all modes. So we're still waiting on some questions, but you put a lot of projects up on your slide. I'm really interested in the home project. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So as part of IPE, um, we have some funds for what we call Preservation Plus. So when we're out doing an action, uh, like a major repaving action, we'll go ahead and run, put a trench in along our priority freight corridors, and we'll put conduit in. And if we need the fiber for future transportation purposes, we'll go ahead and put fiber in and maybe lease out some of that capacity, some of that bandwidth to the private sector. In other cases, we will allow the private sector to come in on a case-by-case -case basis and put fiber in, and maybe we'll use some of that. In this case, along a couple of corridors, what we said is we'll tee off from the main line into fields. And if a farmer is willing to uh, plant one out of four fields in a cover crop, use good soil health conservation approaches, um, we'll get fiber out to, to that particular farm. Now they have to pay for the ongoing service fee. The reason that we're interested in taking a look at this is um, in order to move into a carbon market, you have to prove that you're sequestering carbon. In order to do that, it's pretty data, it's pretty heavy lift on the data analytics part of, of the equation. And so they're gonna need broadband access. So that's an example of working toward the future of where we see opening a, mark, a new market for Kansas business. We're not saying that carbon trading is um, gonna be as big as growing wheat. We're not saying that, but we're always looking for opportunities to expand the footprint of Kansas. So I have put a link in the chat to the fact sheet for the Innovative Technology Program. Uh, Mike or others um, that are working on the innovation side, if there is something a little more updated or other information you want to provide to folks, please put it in the chat. Uh, any other questions? Oh, so Mike Floberg said it would be best to partner with a governmental agency or academic institution. The governmental agency can be local or state. Currently, we are programming $2 million per year, and we are waiting to hear what changes the legislature has elected to make. So thank you for that, Mike. And he'll have a little bit more information on, the pro on this program um, on Thursday late morning. So stay with us for that. Uh, so I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, thank you so much, Secretary, for your time today and for joining us from New Orleans. I hope you have a great meeting and we appreciate you kicking us off. Thank you, Lisa. I look forward to hearing all about it. Absolutely. Thanks everybody, be safe. Bye-bye. So now please go to the Cadence website, to our website. And if you're interested in attending the next session, we invite you to do that and we'll see you over there in a few minutes.